everybody, get my $200 course on sale right now for $25, but only for a limited time. So click the link in the description box with the coupon code already applied. Hey everybody, this is Brianna Rutter from howtoblackhair.com. And if you are new here, make sure to subscribe. And if you ladies love watching my beginner friendly step-by-step -step hair tutorials, then click the bell for notifications because you don't want to miss any of my new videos. In this tutorial, I am going to teach you how to do this crochet hairstyle on your own hair step by step. If you already know how to cornrow braid your hair, then this style will be super easy for you to do. And from start to finish, this hairstyle took me three hours to do. So in just a little bit, I'm going to show you the supplies you're going to need to do this look. So you actually don't need a lot of products. Some of these are actually optional. So go ahead and screenshot the products that you see here so that you can refer back to them when you're getting ready to do your hair. So now I'm gonna show you how my braid pattern looks. And for this style, I decided to do a sew-in type of braid pattern. So that way my hairstyle can look extremely realistic. These two braids here will serve for the leave out for my part because I wanna wear a side part. And then the braid that goes on both sides of my hairline all the way to the back is also going to be left out as well so that way I can wear this hairstyle in a ponytail. So I'm just spinning around to show you how my braid pattern looks right before I begin installing my hair. Now before I install my braiding hair, I'm gonna go ahead and oil my scalp with this hair growth oil. Now this is my first or second time actually trying out this product. I'm not quite sure if I like it or if I don't like it just yet. I just wanted to see if I see any improvements with using it. So if any of you have used this product, be sure to comment down below to let me know. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. So I'm deciding to use a hair growth oil on my scalp to make my hair a little bit more thicker because my hair is actually fine. So now I'm gonna go ahead and begin crocheting, but first I wanna give you a backstory about this hair. This hair did not come like this. This was Konecalon braiding hair that I used to do box braids. And instead of throwing the braids out, I just took them down, washed the hair, and saved it. That's why it's a little crinkled at the ends because I had previously curled it. So I'm gonna show you how I prepare it. You wanna take a wide tooth comb and comb through the bottom section of the hair. So once it's fully detangled, you're then gonna take small pieces and you're going to begin crocheting it on your braid pattern. So this is the latch hook crochet that you want to use. And I'm trying to show you very close so you can see how it looks once you open and close the latch. And one thing I want you to remember when you're crocheting your hair is to make sure that the latch is open when you slide it under your braid and closed when you slide it back out. That's the easiest way to remember. So right here, I'm just showing you where I'm gonna be actually installing my hair because I'm gonna leave those leave out braids as is. Now you open your latch, like I stated before, and you're gonna go underneath one of the braids that you want to start with. Making sure the latch is still open, you're gonna hook your hand your hands just like this so all the hairs are tight together, so that way they can all fit in the hook. So if you ever have issues with tangling, try this method out because sometimes if you're crocheting loose hair, it can get a little tangled if you don't make all the hairs tight together. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to loop that hair in between the loop two times, making sure to twist every time I add the hair back in. When you make sure to twist before looping back in, it adds extra security or tightness to your actual knot, as you can see here. So now one more time, I'm gonna show you how to latch your hair. Make sure all the hairs are tight in your hand and your latch is open when you put it through your braid. Now put the hair around the hook, close the latch, and then pull the latch back through your braid. Now make sure to loop your hair twice or three times if you prefer. But if you have very silky hair, depending on the type of hair you're using, you want to go ahead and you want to rotate your hair around itself about three or four times to make sure that knot is very secure. But this is how mine looks so far and I only have to do it twice to keep the actual sections secure to my braids. Now sometimes, especially around the hairline where I tend to do smaller amounts of hair, I like to loop the hair around three or four times so that it does not shed. Now when you're doing this type of style, you will have very minimal shedding because of the nature of the hair and also depending on how many times you rotate your hands around to create your knot. So keep that in mind, a little bit of shedding is not bad. If you notice that you have a lot of shedding, then I highly suggest that you try different types of braiding hair 
or you make sure to do your actual rotation a couple of times before you form your knot. So as I was showing you, you're just gonna keep working your way up and so far this is how the back looks. Remember that braid in the back is gonna be for leave out. So now in order to put the finishing touches on my hairstyle, I have to do the invisible roots method around the areas where the leave out will be. And I'm just showing you really quick, once again, where my leave out braids are. You want to make sure to keep in mind exactly where they are so that you don't crochet them down when you're actually crocheting your hair. So I left mine loose so I know exactly where they're at. So this is how the hair looks and I'm going to get ready to show you how to do the invisible roots method going around where your leave out will be. It's very important that you do this method so that your blending is seamless. You want to get as close to the beginning of the braid as possible, grabbing a small amount of hair. Now what you want to do is grab one of the legs and pull it through the opening of the hair. Twist your hand and then pull it through again. This is how you do the method and it's extremely simple and easy to do. Now with just one knot, you don't see a big difference. But once you continue to work your way up, going around where your leave out will be, you will notice a significant difference in how seamless this looks. Now, you could also choose to do this hairstyle with no leave out by doing this method right here where you want your real scalp to show. So if you want me to do a tutorial like that for you, I show you how to do the style with absolutely no leave out, then make sure to give me a thumbs up. And also make sure to tell me in the comment section so I know that you want me to do this tutorial. So really quick, this is how it looks after I finish installing those pieces. And this is so much hair. And I'm gonna show you how to tame this wild beast down. So we're gonna use a comb and scissors to do so. And the very first step that I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to trim the very ends. Now I'm also going to straighten this hair. Yes, you heard me right. I'm gonna put heat on synthetic braiding hair and it's still gonna look good and it's not gonna be melted. And I'm gonna show you my tricks on how I do that later. But as you can see here for demonstration purposes, I'm just combing through my sections and I'm trimming the ends. I want the ends to have a slight taper, but really the ends look blunt when you see them on camera. But when you actually see the hair in real life, it's a slight taper near the end, as if there are very, very few layers. So I'm just making sure to clean up the bottom before I begin straightening this beautiful hair. And I actually like it like this. I kept contemplating, should I leave it like this or should I change it? But I really like the way that this looks. So now it's time to tame down this wild hair. And on my flat iron, I went all the way up to the setting number 15 for my desired result. Depending on the type of flat iron you have, I highly suggest that you start with the lowest setting first because you don't want to ruin all your good, beautiful work. You don't want the hair to melt right before your eyes, do you? I didn't think so. So you wanna start on your lowest setting on your flat iron and then work your way up to see where you want your desired fullness to be. And as you can see, this is how one side looks compared to the other side. Both sides are still very full, but you can see an obvious difference between the two. So now I went ahead and straightened all my hair and you can't tell me that this is not a weave. So let me know in the comments if you like to wear styles that look more like a weave or do you like to wear styles that look like more of a natural hairstyle. I would love to know so that way I can show you how to achieve both. So right now, I'm actually using my scissors to thin out the hair. The hair was just a little bit too thick for me. So when you do this hairstyle and you want your hair to be more on the slightly thinner side, then I suggest that every single piece of hair that you crochet on your braid pattern is a very small section of hair. So that way when all of the hair is put together, it's not too thick. So I spent a little bit of time actually trimming. And I would say about a third of the time I spent installing my hair, I actually spent that time on thinning out the hair because it was just a little too thick for my taste. It looks absolutely gorgeous, don't get me wrong, but I wanted it to just be a little bit more on the thinner side. And this is the result that I wanted to achieve with my crochet hairstyle. After I finished trimming through all of my hair, this is how it looks. It just took away just a little bit of thickness. And now it's time to straighten our leave out. But what do you know? I pulled out the old school tool. So the tool I'm using is called a hot comb. So if you're old school and you know exactly what I'm talking about and you got some crazy hot comb stories, then I want you to tell me in the comment section down below. I would love to read them. But for those of you who may not have ever used this before, this tool is perfect for straining out all your kinks. Now, if you want to actually use this product and you're wondering where I got it from, then be sure to check the description box for links to this product. I already made sure to put some heat protectant on my hair so that I can protect my hair from heat damage or from any type of breakage from putting heat on it. 
Now, as you can see, I'm going through my hair multiple times. And the reason why is because I like to put my hot comb on a very low setting. So that way I keep the damage very, very minimal. I do not ever see damage with my hair when I do this method when I'm using a hot comb or when I'm using a flat iron. So as you can tell, I got a lot of courage actually putting this hot comb up to my hairline like that. So I advise for y'all to be a little bit more careful than me, but I have been doing this for a while. So I can feel when the heat is just a little too close, I'm like, okay, I need to back this up just a little bit so I don't burn myself. So just be careful when you're using the hot comb to make sure that you get really, really close, but you don't actually touch your scalp. And this is how my leave out looks. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and style it up with a little bit of edge control. So you can use any type of products that you want. You can choose to leave your edges all natural, or you can do what I do, which is always using a fine tooth comb and edge control to style up those edges. So you can choose to slick them back or add some waves so that you can make everybody seasick when they see your hair, okay? One thing that I don't always show when I'm actually doing my edges is that after I apply edge control, I like to spray with hairspray to make sure that my edges last all day long. Now, if you watch this far, I need y'all to do me one quick favor. I want you to leave a bunch of random emojis down in the comment section. The reason why is because when people come back to watch this video that haven't seen it yet, I want them to see it and then comment like, why is there like a burger emoji and then a moon emoji and then a taco emoji? What's going on with this video? I just want to see people's reactions and I also want to comment back with emojis. And like I said before, if you want me to do a style like this again without using leave out, then all you gotta do is leave the request down below. Okay, so I want to thank y'all so much for watching my crochet braids hairstyle. So if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe right now and click the bell for notifications as always because you don't want to miss any of my new videos that I'm about to drop. See y'all in my next tutorial. And by the way, I want to make sure to thank all of you for rocking with me over the years. We got to half a million subscribers and now we got to get to one million. Hey everybody! Get my $200 course on sale right now for $25, but only for a limited time. So click the link in the description box with the coupon code already applied.